Welcome back to yet another video. We learned a lot about components and React.js in general. How to output data, how to work with the HTML-like code in our components, and how to use state, how to change the state of our components and how re to re-render the UI when a state change appears. We also had a look at cross-component communication, how to change or to exchange data between components. Now, components in React.js follow a life cycle for all these tasks, basically. So each component has a life cycle and the different hooks or events or phases in this life cycle get triggered upon different events. Now, let's have a look at this life cycle. It's slide time again. But slides really make sense here. When you create a new component, and with that I don't mean in code, but when it gets loaded in your running application, the very first method which gets called, provided that you implemented it in your class, otherwise it gets ignored, is component will mount. So that's a protected method name, and you can implement this method, you don't have to. And if you have it, then it will get executed and component will mount will get executed right before the initial rendering. So right before your render method gets executed, then component will mount get, gets executed. Component did mount is the next method in the life cycle. This method here is being run by React.js after the initial rendering, immediately after the initial rendering. Thereafter we reach component will receive props. This will be executed whenever the component is about to receive new props. So if the props changed because a state change happened or something like that, then this hook here is executed. Then we have should component update. It sounds like a question and it really is because this is executed before it re-renders it. So the Re React.js recognized that there is a reason to re-render the component and now it's figuring out should I re-render and I told you that it does this with the virtual DOM but it also executes the should component update method and here you can return false to prevent it from re rendering. So if you know that you don't want to re-render because you may have some logic in the should component update method where you check something and then you know nope no reason to re-render, then you basically take this task off React.js and just tell it don't re-render this component, no matter what your virtual DOM thing says. So then the component will not get re-rendered. Well, we also have component will update, which I think that makes sense, gets executed after should component update returned true or didn't return false at least then component will update is run. This component is called before rendering, but after new props or state were received and after should component update, well, didn't return false at least. Then we have component did update, which is executed after re-rendering the component. So after it actually has been re-rendered and the DOM, the actual DOM, has been updated. And then we also have component will unmount, which gets executed whenever you're removing this whole component from the DOM. For example, through routing, or as you will see in an upcoming example, some other ways of basically removing it. So that's the theory. Let's see all these hooks in action now. I'll go into my home component once again. And I got quite some logic in this file already, but shouldn't be an issue. And here I will add a console log to my constructor, where I just say constructor, so that we see where we are at. We then will be able to see the whole life cycle in our JavaScript log. So the next method I add is component will mount. You learned that this is the first method in the lifecycle hook which gets executed. And I will keep the order from the slides here. So component will mount execute this component will mount we're at this point now if we call this set state in component will mount then the render method will already take this new state into account 
So only one rendering will be executed because we haven't rendered yet. So changing the state doesn't trigger a re-render. The initial rendering will be changed instead. So we only have one rendering phase still. So then we have component did mount next, which is executed after, well, our rendering occurred. So here we can execute console log component did mount like that. Then we have component will receive props whenever some properties get updated. And therefore this method here actually gets these props, next props. So here I will log component, oops, as a string maybe, component will receive props and then also print these props to the console. Then we have component, excuse me, should component update, where we get our upcoming props and the next state. Because of course the update only is something which may happen with new props or a new state. So should the component update, well, let's first print that we are at this point. Should component update. And then I want to print next props and next state. And I will return true so that we do continue here. Then I have component will update. So we know that we want to. So now we're right before doing it. Again, here we have the next props and the next state available. We do have this, as you can see, in all the update related um, hooks. So component will update is the place where we are now. Component will update, pass the next props and state here too. Thereafter, we reach component did update, of course. Here we get the previous props and previous state because now we don't have next props and next state because the update already happened. So the old state is the current state. We don't have an upcoming state or properties props. So component did update. Let's log this to the console component did update and then previous props and previous state like this. And then finally, almost there, component will unmount. So here I log, console log, component will unmount, like this. Whew. So all the states are set up here. Now I want to make some additional changes so that we can, well, so that some of these states get uh, triggered or some of these hooks get actually triggered. For example, will unmount currently wouldn't get triggered. So let me change something so that we do see all uh, of these events getting or all of these hooks getting executed. For that, I'll go to my index.js file and I'll add something to the initial state here, to the state of this component. I'll name it home mounted and this is true. This will decide on whether this home component should be mounted or not. I'll then add a new method here on change home mounted where I want to set the state, this set state and change the state of this home mounted key or property. And I basically want to Reward it. So if it was mounted before, it should be unmounted and vice versa. With that in my render function here, well, to make this a bit cleaner to see, I'll create a new variable, home component here, which is an empty string by default. So nothing basically, no component will not get added to the DOM. But if this state home mounted, if that is true, that's what I'm checking here, it's a boolean in the end, right? Then home component should equal this. Remember, you can't write stuff like that because it's all JavaScript here. That's really important to keep in mind. It's all JavaScript, it's not HTML, even if it looks like that. So here I'm um, creating home component, setting it equal to this now. 
Uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to restructure it like that. Would have worked the other way too, but now it's a bit easier to read. So that doesn't change, that's still my home component. But down here, I want to render home component. And keep in mind, that's either an empty string, so nothing, or it is my home component. And it will only be my home component if this state home mounted is true. So all that's left to do for me now is to add a button which allows me to change this state. Whoops, didn't mean to cut this, so I'm copying this row. Add a button here where I say unmount home component. Un in parentheses because I could also mount it if it was unmounted. Give it some styling as always, should look nice. And then of course add the on click listener or event handler to execute this on change home mounted without parentheses. But since we use this in this method, we have to bind this. So make sure to add bind this. With that in place, let's head over, open the console so that we can actually see something. I'll clear it. And now I'll reload this page. So we see we reached a constructor here. I'll actually increase this in size a bit. We reached a constructor. Then we reached component will mount. Then we reached component did mount. Just reloading that so that we can clearly see it. Component will mount, component did mount, right? Then we get the should component update uh, hook here getting executed will update, did update. Why does this take a couple of seconds? Look again, I reload, we only see until did mount. We don't see anything related to updating. Well, the reason for all these update related routes here, of course, is that the state has changed. Remember, we still have this counter in our home component here. And this changes the state which of course then triggers all the update related hooks, which is should component update, component will update, component did update. Now here, if I were to say in should component update, if this state status, excuse me, if next state, if next state status equals one, in this case, return false. Now, if I save this, reload this, reload the page. Well, now you see only should component update gets executed, not the other two methods. And the status isn't changed because now I'm returning false. I'm overwriting the default behavior of React.js and I'm telling it, no, don't update. I know what I'm doing. I don't want to re-render the, the view, even though we know the status has changed to one. Nothing is re-rendered. If I click on the make me older button here, we see we reach should component update. But since the status in our next status is still one, we're still blocked and we don't see that change too. So that's important to keep in mind. Next state is also affected here or that also has effect if we then change something else, since the next state is the overall state object. And if status there still is zero, well, then we're still getting blocked, even if we now change something else. I hope that makes sense. Next state is your state object here. And the next state of status is one. So now we're dead for all the future, doesn't work. I can show you by reloading and hitting make me older instantly. Now you see where we were with that action before the three seconds expired, before status was changed to one. Therefore, we see the change and we see that we executed should component update, status is zero, therefore we were successful. Then component will update was called right before updating and then component did update after it updated the DOM. So that are all the update related hooks. And thereafter, we're again at should component update because the state has changed. It changed to one, therefore everything was blocked. Now I will comment out this check here because I don't want to block all the updates. So reload the page again and now we can see 
it successfully updates through. So that was a lot of talking about the update related stuff, but of course it's key to understand what's happening there and how you can control the updating behavior. So we saw the constructor, which technically is not a lifecycle hook, but just the constructor of this component. Then we see component will mount, did mount, and then the three update related hooks. If we have a look at our code, we saw will mount, did mount, and the update hooks. So we didn't see will unmount and we didn't see will receive props. Well, let's change something about that. I emptied the console here again. And now let's change this to changed like that. Now a whole lot of updating going on because we're changing the state with every keystroke. So emptying the console again. And now I'm going to click on change header link. What do you expect to happen now? Probably we should get the should update stuff because the uh, state changes, right? Indeed, we see should component update, will update, did update. But before that, we also saw component will receive props. Now, why is that the case? What are these props we're getting here? Well, as you see, we get the name and the age and both certainly didn't change. But the initial link name changed to changed. Changed to changed. Yeah, that really is a great example by me. But it changed to changed. And the reason for that, of course, is that when we click on the change link, change header link button, we're executing this on change link, remember? Which is in my index.js file on change link name. Here, I'm then changing the state. And then I'm passing uh, here, I'm passing the initial link name. So this changed state as, state as props to my home component again, which is why I see receive props first. Now you might say the state changed first. Why do I see receive props first? Well, the reason is because just that's the order of the lifecycle hooks. Yes, the state changed first, but should component update isn't even connected to the state change, not directly at least. It's just a hook which gets executed after will receive props. So we received new props because we changed the state in our parent component. And then we executed all the other components, uh, hooks here. So the last missing hook is the unmount or the component will unmount hook. So let's see this hook by clearing the console and clicking on on mount home component or unmount home component. Component will unmount was called just like that. So now we had the final change. If I click on it again, we see again, component will mount, did mount and after three seconds, the state has changed again. So that is how you can play around with that and how you can play around with the states and just try them out. Change some code in each hook and see what you can do there to which you got access and how the overall application behaviors behaves when you do so. Whew. So quite a big video again, a lot of cover, not only in that video, also in all the other videos. Still got some upcoming content on the React.js router, for example, before then moving on to React.js and Redux. See you there. Bye.